Chapter Eight of the Patchwork Girl of Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Elizabeth Serenka. The Patchwork Girl of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Chapter Eight: The Foolish Owl and the Wise Donkey. On they went and half an hour's steady walking brought them to a house somewhat better than the two they had already passed. It stood close to the roadside, and over the door was a sign that read, Miss Foolish Owl and Mr. Wise Donkey, Public Advisors. When Ojo read the sign aloud, Scrap said laughingly, Well, here's the place to get all the advice we want, maybe more than we need. Let's go in. The boy knocked at the door. Come in called a deep bass voice. So they opened the door and entered the house, where a little light brown donkey, dressed in a blue apron and a blue cap, was engaged in dusting the furniture with the blue cloth. On a shelf over the window sat a great blue owl, with a blue sunbonnet on her head, blinking her big round eyes at the visitors. "'Good morning,' said the donkey in his deep voice, which seemed bigger than he was. Did you come to us for advice? Why, we came anyhow, replied Scraps. And now we are here, we may as well have some advice. It's free, isn't it? Certainly, said the donkey. Advice doesn't cost anything, unless you follow it. Permit me to say, by the way, that you are the queerest lot of travelers that ever came into my shop. Judging you merely by appearances... I think you'd better talk to the foolish owl yonder. They turned to look at the bird, which fluttered its wings and stared back at them with its big eyes. Hoot teet toot teet toot, cried the owl. Fiddle cum foo, how do you do? Riddle cum tootle cum, too ra la loo. That beats your poetry, Scraps, said Ojo. It's just nonsense, declared the glass cat. But it's good advice for the foolish, said the donkey admiringly. Listen to my partner, and you can't go wrong, said the owl in a grumbling voice. Patrick girl has come to life, no one's sweetheart, no one's wife. Lacking sense and loving fun, she'll be snubbed by everyone. Quite a compliment, quite a compliment, I declare, exclaimed the donkey, turning to look at Scraps. You are certainly a wonder, my dear, and I fancy you'd make a splendid pincushion. If you belonged to me, I'd wear smoked glasses when I looked at you. Why? asked the patchwork girl. Because you are so gay and gaudy. It is my beauty that dazzles you, she asserted. You munchkin people all strut around in your stupid blue color while I... You are wrong in calling me a munchkin interrupted the donkey for i was born in the land of mo and i came to visit the land of oz on the day it was shut off from the rest of the world so here i am obliged to stay and i confess it is a very pleasant country to live in hoot teet toot cried the owl ojo searching for a charm cause unk nunkies come to harm charms are scarce they're hard to get ojo's got a job you bet is the owl so very foolish asked the boy extremely so replied the donkey notice what vulgar expressions she uses but i admire the owl for the reason that she is positively foolish owls are supposed to be so very wise generally that a foolish one is unusual and you perhaps know that anything or anyone unusual is sure to be interesting to the wise the owl flapped its wings again, muttering these words. It's hard to be a glassy cat. No cat can be more hard than that. She's so transparent every act. It's clear to us, and that's a fact. Have you noticed my pink brains? inquired Bungle proudly. You can see em work. Not in the daytime, said the donkey. She can't see very well by day, poor thing. But her advice is excellent. I advise you to follow it. The owl hasn't given us any advice as yet, the boy declared. No, 
Then what do you call all those sweet poems? Just foolishness, replied Ojo. Scraps does the same thing. Foolishness, of course, to be sure. The foolish owl must be foolish, or she wouldn't be the foolish owl. You are very complimentary to my partner indeed, asserted the donkey, rubbing his front hoofs together as if highly pleased. The sign says that you are wise, marked Scraps to the donkey. I wish you would prove it. With great pleasure, returned the beast. Put me to the test, my dear Patches, and I'll prove my wisdom in the wink of an eye. What is the best way to get to the Emerald City? asked Ojo. Walk, said the donkey. I know, but what road shall I take? was the boy's next question. The road of yellow bricks, of course. It leads directly to the Emerald City. And how shall we find the road of yellow bricks? By keeping along the path you have been following. You'll come to the yellow bricks pretty soon, and you'll know them when you see them, because they're the only yellow things in the blue country. Thank you, said the boy. At least you have told me something. Is that the extent of your wisdom? asked Scraps. No, replied the donkey. I know many other things, but they wouldn't interest you. So I'll give you a last word of advice. Move on, for the sooner you do that, the sooner you'll get to the Emerald City of Oz. Hoot teet toot teet toot teet toot, screeched the owl. Off you go, fast or slow, where you going, you don't know. Patches, bungle, munchkin, lad. Facing fortunes, good and bad, meeting dangers, grave and sad, sometimes worried, sometimes glad. Where you're going, you don't know, nor do I, but off you go. Sounds like a hint to me, said the patchwork girl. Then let's take it and go, replied Ojo. They said goodbye to the wise donkey and the foolish owl, and at once resumed their journey. End of chapter 8 Recording by Elizabeth Saranka